Hello FPV Curious friends. Uh, this video is going to be on how to set up Velostrone. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is go to Velostrone.com. That's V-E-L-O-C-I-D-R-O-N-E.com. And if you go to the shop tab on the top, there's going to be a list of system specs. Um, make sure that your computer is up to at least those minimum specs before you purchase, make any purchases, um, just so that you have a good experience in the simulator. So it should be included in the standard Velostrone license. Um, if you feel like getting all the, the, the downloadable content, um, it probably wouldn't be a half bad idea just so that you have access to all the available tracks as well and all the available assets. But that's, you don't need any of the other ones uh, to do this. You only need the basic Velocidrone license. So once you have that downloaded, uh, purchase downloaded, installed, you're going to take your radio and you're going to make sure that you locate the correct USB plug because some of these radios are going to have two USB plugs on them. So there's going to be, I have one up top and then one at the bottom. The one at the bottom of my radio is specifically for charging the radio only. Um, the one at the top is the one that is going to be for using and connecting it to the computer. So the first thing that you want to do to connect this to the computer is you're going to power on the radio. And once it's started, then plug your USB cable in, and it's going to give you an option on the screen, and you're going to select USB joystick, and then in parentheses, it's going to say HID, which stands for Human Interface Device. And once you select that, it should ding in Windows, like you connected a USB device, and now it should have already installed, everything should be done and ready to go from there. So the radio should be ready to use. Uh, what you're going to do next is open up Velocidrone, let me turn off the stick cams real quick. And then we're going to go down here to controller. So once you're in the controller, uh, you want to make sure that your radio is showing up in this uh, box right here. And if not, click assign controller. If you have multiple things connected, um, that can cause a problem. But make sure that the, the radio that you have is connected. And then you're going to click assign six. And then all you're going to do once you click assign sticks is follow the motion that you see on the screen. So it's top left, you know, both sticks and diagonals. And then it says center sticks. Then you're going to follow what it says on the screen. So left stick right. Right stick up. Right stick right. Left stick up. And then center it again. And then the roll stick is going to be on the right stick. And then the pitch stick is going to be on the right stick put up and down. Yaw sticks, left stick, left and right. And then throttle sticks, left stick, up and down. And then you're going to take it and you're going to move each stick individually, follow what's on the screen, and make sure that the motions are correct. Because you see right here, that's backwards. So we're going to we're going to remember that and we're going to come back to it. So right now the right stick forward's good, down is good, right is good, left is good. So I do have to reverse the left the yaw stick on the left, which is moving backwards because I'm moving it to the right and it's going left on the screen right now. So I'm going to go ahead and click yes and it's not roll it's not pitch, but it is the yaw stick. So we're going to click yes on that and then no on throttle. And then we're going to check. So yaw stick, left and right, up and down for throttle. It's good. Right roll, left roll, pitch forward, pitch back. Perfect. And everything moves exactly the way it's showing. So once we're done with that, um, that's all you really need to configure. That's the only thing. You can configure resets and stuff like that onto the radio later if you want, but I really recommend against it. Um, if you make a crash, it's better to initially right now learn to just fly away from it and learn to kind of use your spatial 
awareness to make sure that you're going back in the right direction and not reset every single time. And if you do want to reset, there's keyboard shortcuts, but we'll get to that later. So now that our radio is mapped out and everything's mapped correctly, we're going to hit back and we're going to go into single player. And what you're going to do is we are going to go, this should be blank for you. You're going to click add a quad. And then on the left menu here, select street league quads, second from the bottom, and pick any, any drone. Um, I fly the Super 70 in the sim, just because I fly one in real life. And then you can nickname it up here if you want. I generally don't do anything with that. Uh, the one, two things that you are going to want to do is you're going to want to set the propeller profile to one. And then you're going to want to make sure that the camera angle is turned up to, I'd say, anywhere between 40 and 45 degrees. I personally like a higher camera angle, so I like it at 45. I actually normally fly it around 50. Um, but for when you're first starting off, 45 is a really good angle to start with, especially on street league. So I really do recommend doing 45. So once that's done, you're going to click add quad and that adds the drone in and we're going to click continue. And then once this is going to bring you to the map, uh, all the maps, and the problem I kind of have with Velocitron is that there's not a really good way to sort through this, unfortunately. So what you want to do next is go right here in this drop-down menu that says Any Class. Click that drop-down, and we're going to go immediately to Beginner. And this is going to list out all the beginner tracks. And if you scroll down, it should be in alphabetical order, starting with number stuff. And then once you get into B, you're going to look for four tracks that start with bits beginner and then basic control. So there's bits beginner basic control and then there's bits beginner basic control two, three, and four. I would go ahead and click the favorite button just so that way you have them indexed and then later on whenever you get back into the track menu and you want to come back to those maps you don't have to go search for it you can just check the favorites box right here and then when it's with it in any class and it'll bring up all the maps that you had favorited. So I'm going to go ahead. Uh, well, the next set of settings that you're going to want to do in Velostrone um, are you actually have to get into a track to make the next set of changes. So let's go bits beginner basic control and then click the fly button on the right side that's lined up with that. And then that's going to load you into the map. Once you're loaded in, click menu on the bottom right and then advanced drone setup. So the things that we're going to be changing are the three, well, actually really only two columns first. It's RC rate, rate, and expo. And what these do is that it changes the calculation for what they call max velocity. So as you move the sticks, so I'm moving the roll stick right now. At full deflection, the way it's set up right now, it's gonna try to roll the drone to the right at 666 degrees. And if I go full left, it's gonna do the same thing. It's gonna shoot to roll at 666 degrees. But if you see, I can kind of go half stick here at about the half mark, it's in the red. It's at about 152 degrees. So it's not a linear it's not linear right now. Um, what I recommend changing here is that you go through the rate and then the RC Expo, and we're just going to type in zeros for every one of these. So highlight it, zero, highlight it, zero, highlight it, zero. And the same thing with Expo, highlight it, zero, zero, zero. And if you look, it changed the max velocity to 200. So what that means now is that when in any of the stick motions with yaw, pitch, or roll, it's going to make it, it's, it's linear from 200 degrees at full deflection, 200 degrees a second, to no motion whatsoever. So and if you see I go about half right now, it's just that at about 100 degrees. So it's linear, it is very linear, and it's going to make learning 
what the sticks do much easier because it's not going to be super twitchy. It's You can kind of bang the sticks around and then you're going to be able to kind of figure out what the controls are. Um, so now that we're done with this setup, that's basically all we need to do in this page. Don't do anything else. Um, we can go ahead and click back and back again, and that takes you back into the main bit of the game. So what you're going to want to press here is uh, press the H button. And if you see when you press the H, it turns on the crosshair in the middle of the screen. Um, I recommend having the crosshair on because it just gives you a visual of where the center of the screen is that your eyes can kind of always draw back to what the middle of the screen is and it kind of helps you understand where and how you're moving the drone around. So you have to remember that the camera angle in these is fixed. So when it's set at 45 degrees with it sitting flat on the ground right now, technically the drone is looking up at a 45 degree angle, which is what you're seeing on the screen right now. And if you hit shift H, it'll change the style of the crosshair. Um, I would probably say stay with the simplest thing. Um, I usually run this cross, like that's little plus, or I run the single dot in the middle of the screen. Um, those are my two personal pref two personal favorites um, for you. Whatever whatever is visually appealing, uh, appealing. Excuse me. Whatever is visually appealing to you. Um, that's what you're going to want to do. And then the last thing that you're going to want to do before we start flying is on the top right here where it says mode, you want to click that until it says rate. And what that means is that you're in full manual control. Um, I like to get new pilots directly into this full manual mode, especially in the sim, because if you start in any of the other modes that help auto level and whatnot it builds up a very weird and bad habit and that will cause and it's going to cause you it's going to cause you uh to have to get rid of those bad habits when you start flying in full manual mode later um with the rates and everything set the way they are right now this is a really good starting point it's super docile and the tracks that I designed here are specifically designed so that you have all the room in the world to figure it out. And uh, that's it for the basic setup of Velostron. Ooh, one last thing. So the one other thing I do want to bring up to you guys is that if you're flying, if you start flying and you do feel like you're getting a little bit of motion sickness, um, go into the video settings of the game back at the main menu, and you're going to want to select a resolution that's a 4x3 resolution versus a 16x9. So if you see on the side of my screens here, I have these two black bars, and the two black bars... Um, or just because instead of it being a 16 by 9, which fills up most standard screens right now, it's changed the aspect ratio, aspect ratio to a 4 by 3. It gives you a little bit more vertical field of view, and it also eliminates a little bit of that motion blur at the edges of the screen. Um, that motion blur that I find on the edge of the screen, even though it's not a lot, is what causes me to get motion sick. I actually kind of feel like I want to vomit <laughs> when I have it on 16 by 9. So uh, that brings us up to the end of this video, and uh, we'll start the next video right into how to fly. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.